All right then, so now we've seen a little bit about how to work with TypeScript using the Options API, I want to move on to working with the Composition API and the Setup Hook. Again, if you know nothing about that, definitely check out my View 3 tutorial first of all, and then come back. The link to that is going to be down below, because I am assuming you know about the Setup function, how to work with the refs and reactive data, all that kind of jazz. If you don't know that, then this might go over your head. So first up, let's create the setup function. So setup like so, and then a comma at the end. And then what I want to try and do is make the same data properties as before, but inside setup instead. So let me get rid of this data method right here. Now, when we're working with data in the setup function, we can use either refs or reactive values. I'm going to show you how to work with both. So then, first of all, we're going to start off with reactive. So what I'm going to do is say const state is equal to reactive. I'm going to click on this to auto import it from view right here. And then inside here, we pass in an object which represents our data, our state. Now, just like before, we can add different properties. So name could be a string. And again, TypeScript is automatically going to infer this to be of type string. Now, if we add the second one, age, that is going to be 25. This time, again, we want to explicitly say this could be a number or a string. So again, we have to use type assertion. So I'm going to say as, and then it's going to be string, and then pipe number. So a union type, meaning this can be a string or a number. And that's pretty much it as far as creating the state goes. Now, if we want to use this inside our component up here, we can do, we just have to return these values at the bottom. Now, the way we do this is by first of all, returning an object. And then we want to basically take these properties and turn them into individual ref values that can be returned inside this object. So to do that, we can say two refs and then pass in the state like so. Now we want to spread these out into individual properties inside this object. So use the spread syntax. Now we also need to import two refs as well for this to work like so. So now if I save this, then the age and the name should be still working up here in the template. So let's preview. Yep, they're still there. And the functions are still going to work the same way. These methods down here, they don't have to be defined inside setup. We can have setup for state and reactive values and still access that by using this.name and this.age down here in the functions. So if we click on these buttons, they're still going to work. Awesome. Everything still works this way. Now, what if we try to change this state inside the setup hook? For example, I might want to change the name. Well, I would normally say state, which is what the constant is called down here, then access the name property, and we could set it equal to something else. So I could set it equal to Sean right here, and that would be fine. But if I try to change it into a number, then this is not going to work because remember, this is automatically inferred to be a string, and it can only ever be a string, therefore, in the future. So this is not allowed. So comment cannot change type. All right then. So what about if we wanted to change the age? Well, state.age and we set that equal to, for example, 26. That's going to work. If we put it in quotes, it's going to work because this can be a string or a number, but any other type and it's not going to work. All right then. So that's how we work with this reactive thing right here. What if we want to use refs instead? Well, let me comment all of that out and let's try using refs instead of reactive. So I'm going to start by saying const and then name is equal to a ref. I'm going to click on this to auto import it up here. And then we need to pass in a value, which is going to be link. Now, again, TypeScript is going to automatically infer the type of this to be a string now. And if we try to update the name to be something else in the future, like a number, it's not going to work. For example, name dot value. If we now set that equal, oops, this should be name right here, equal to 25. This is not going to allow us to do it. If we change it to something else like Yoshi, it is going to allow us. So let's get rid of that. That's how we create a ref with automatic type inference. Now, what if we create the age? Well, I'm going to say const age is equal to ref again, and we're going to pass in an initial value. 
Now, this is automatically inferred to be a number, but we want it to be a number or a string. So how do we explicitly type this to be the string number union type? Well, this time around, we can't use type assertion. We can't say as number string like this. This doesn't work because this thing right here returns a reference object, not the actual value. So we can't type that as a number or string. Instead, what we have to use is a generic argument. Now, the way we do that is by after ref right here, angle brackets, then the union type, so number or string like so. And then what this basically does is pass in the type into the ref to override the default inferred type. So that's all we're doing. We're giving this ref a type using a generic. All right, so now if I try to update the age to a number, so age.value is equal to 30, that works. And also as a string, that works. But if it was something else like a Boolean, then that's not going to work. All right. So that's how we work with refs. We use generic arguments instead of using type assertion. So what I'm going to do is return these values so they can both be used up here and in the function as well. So let me do that at the bottom. I'm going to say return an object where I'm going to pass in the name and the age like so. Save it and see if this works. Yep. And if we try to use the functions, they work as well. So it's up to you whether you use this reactive function right here or refs. I prefer most of the time to use refs. So that's what I'm going to be using going forward. All right, then. So there's one more thing I want to do for this video, and that is to create a custom type for our website. Now, that type will describe a job object, which we're going to use to output jobs to the browser later on. Before we do that, let me just comment out a few things. I'm going to get rid of, in fact, all of this right here and also these methods. We can delete those because we're not going to use them anymore. I was just using this to demo how to use TypeScript inside the functions. This right here we don't need as well. Okay then, so let's first of all create this job type. Now I'm going to do that in a new folder which I'm going to call types. You don't have to create it here. You can create it in whatever folder you want and inside here I'm going to create a file which I will call job.ts. All right then, so I'm going to use an interface to create this type, but you can use a type if you prefer. So this interface is going to be called job and inside here we're going to have a title property and that is going to be of type string. We're also going to have a location property, which is going to be a string and also a salary, which we'll say is a number could be a string if you want and also an ID which could be a number or a string will go with string. So this basically is describing what our job objects should look like. Now we need to export this. So export defaults and it's going to be job. Again, if you don't understand what this is, definitely check out the TypeScript tutorial first of all. All right, so now we have this interface, this job type right here. I want to use it inside this app component. So the first thing I need to do is import it. So up here, I'm going to import job from, and then I want to go into the types folder, and then I want the job file. All right, so we have this job type. Now I want to create some data inside the setup function, which is going to be an array of jobs. And we're going to say, look, that everything inside that array, every object should be of the type job. All right, so we can't put random objects inside that data. So we're going to create a ref to do this down here. Let's say const jobs is equal to a ref and we're going to pass in an initial value, which is an array. Now, again, I want to type this array of objects. So we're going to use a generic to do this. So angle brackets and then it's going to be of type job like this but it's not just a job object because it's an array of job objects so to say that we just place square brackets after the job to say look this is an array of job objects so now if we place an object inside this array that doesn't adhere to this job interface right here, if it has different properties, it's going to give us an error. For example, if I put name here and say something like Sean, then it knows that this property shouldn't be in this object because it's not in the job interface. It has to match this thing right here. It has to have a title, location, salary, 
and ID. So let's add those in instead. So I'm going to create the first one and then I'll paste in the rest of the objects. So title, let's say farm worker. And then also we need a location. This is going to be Lon Lon Ranch. And then after that, we need a salary, which is going to be 30,000. And then finally, we need an ID, which is a string, and that's just going to be one. So now we don't get any errors here because it completely conforms to the job interface. All right, then. So now what I want to do is just paste in a few more objects. So let me do that. These have come from my repo. We have a quarry man, a death mountain, a flute player in a lost woods, fisherman, Lake Hylia, prison guard, Gerudo Valley. All right, then. So that is our data. And we're saying every one of these objects is now of job type. So now let me return the jobs right here so we can use them in the template. So if I come up to the template now, I can come up here and output one of these jobs. I'm going to do that inside a paragraph tag and we'll say jobs zero. So grab the first one dot location. Doesn't really matter. We're just testing this works. All right, so if I save that now and preview, we can see the location of that first job. Awesome. All right, so this is all working and hopefully now you can see how we can use reactive and refs as well inside setup with TypeScript to type these different bits of data. Now, I just wanna tidy up this because we're not gonna be using any of that going forward, so let me get rid of it. And that's pretty much everything. So next up, we're gonna look at props. We're gonna try passing this data into another component using props. And we'll see how that works with TypeScript.